Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. I know, I know, it's been a while since the last one, but there have been a lot of things going on over the last few weeks and months and things that I don't want to talk about just yet. Things that I will talk about in one of my next podcast episodes, but it's not part of this video. Let's just say I will continue to upload videos occasionally until things have settled down. But today's video will be about an alternative to the Doubler 2 software that I've already done some reviews on my channel. Maybe you've watched a video where I demonstrate how to play drum triggers or melodies with your voice. The free DAW plugin that we are going to talk about today doesn't support drum mode, so you can't play drums with it, but it does support voice and it doesn't even support monophonic voice, but also polyphonic voice and different instruments. Will it hold up to double or two or does it fall flat in comparison? Let's find out in today's video. For starters, I will show you a tiny loop that I've just inserted here, a guitar loop that is a bit tricky, but it's already kind of impressive because it's just a really short and heavily muted thing that you can use in, for example, pop music. And it's this. Since Doubler 2, the software that I've already reviewed, you will find a link to the reviews in the video description and in the info card, only supports voice. So it's meant to be used with a microphone while you're sitting in front of a mic and you are singing notes and it will in real time translate this into MIDI. The plugin that we're using today doesn't do real time translation, but then again, it's free and it's more accurate, at least in some situations. So basically what it does is it can either load audio from a file or you can play audio back from your DAW and we transcribe it into MIDI right after and you can drag the MIDI clip from the plugin into your DAW and process it further there. I will show you how to navigate it and which features are accessible and which most likely aren't. And in order to load and instantiate it, I will create a new track. And in order to instantiate the plugin, we will go into the effects chain by pressing F. FX. Track one test around the dialog. List one list. And in my case, I will have to press add. If you already open the add dialog by just pressing F with an empty effects chain, you don't need to press A for that. Add effects to track one test around the dialog filter. Search filter combo box collapsed. Edit selected neural node. Here we go. It's neural node that we are looking for, which is written N E U R A L N O T E. We were searching for that. List one list VST three neural node D R audio one of one. Here we go from Doctor Audio. It's a free plugin that is available on GitHub. You can find the link in the video description as usual. However, you will need to create an account in order to download it. FX track one test neural node dialog list one list VST three neural node D R. Audio We've now instantiated the plugin and what we now need to do in order to get into the interface is we need to press F6. And here we already have some buttons and I would try to explain you what they do, although I don't know what many of them do. The first one, for example, is one that is checked by default, but I don't know what it does. That is pretty self-explanatory. So you have to press that and as soon as you do that, you will be able to record something and I would demonstrate this in a second. Unknown. This is an unknown field. This is important. I will show you what you need to do with this, but just keep tabbing for now. Button. This is an unlabeled button. Button. Just as well as this one, and I don't know what these do. Toggle button on quest. I don't know what this one does either. Record button, toggle button off not quest. But we are just through the interface once, and here we are back to the record button. So let me just quickly record a tiny little snippet so that you get an idea of how it works. I will hit record and in order to toggle those buttons, you will need to use the interaction method of your choice, but enter and space will not work. You will have to use NVDA enter for that, for example, which is what I will do now. Invoke on. Da, 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 da. Invoke off. And now Add button. what happens if I press tab is it throws me out of the window. That is kind of weird, uh, but not unexpected. Remove button, list one, list. We just 
tab two more times, get back to the effects list, press F6. And here we are within the new interface that is the UI that comes up as soon as it has a clip loaded. Clear button button. The clear button clears everything that has been recorded, including the MIDI, and resets you back to the original recording screen. The next button, back button, button. the back button, doesn't do anything as far as I know. So I always use the clear button and didn't find a purpose for the back button yet. Play pause button, toggle button off, not pressed. This is the first play pause button and it will allow us to play the audio that we've just recorded together with the MIDI it has detected. Play pause button, toggle button off, not pressed. There's a second play pause button and to be honest, I haven't found out what it does yet. No pitch band combo box, no pitch band collapsed. So in this pitch band box, you can switch between no pitch band and single pitch band. Single pitch band. No pitch band. I will leave it at no pitch band. Unknown. This is the unknown field again, and we will need this later again. Edit 120. This is the tempo. I try to change this, but I don't know what it does exactly. Like, it doesn't seem to adjust. It might actually just be a field that represents the tempo of the door at the moment of recording the piece. I don't know for sure, but try yourself and let me know if you find something out about this plugin that I didn't know. Button. This is the unlabeled button. button. And this is the second one. C combo box C collapsed. So this is quite interesting. You can pick the key and the scale that the song is in so that it automatically corrects some pitching mistakes. So for example, by default, chromatic combo box chromatic collapsed. It's set to C chromatic, but I can also set it to major. C major minor. or C minor. Major chromatic. Or to any of the other notes. If you know the key that you are trying to sing in, or if you know the key that the piece that you are trying to transcribe to MIDI is in, then feel free to set those because that will make the MIDI transcription more accurate. Remove combo box, remove collapsed. I don't know what this combo box is for. It can adjust. be toggled between adjust, remove, and remove, and I don't know what it does. Toggle button on pressed. And same goes for this button. Clear button button. And then we are once through the entire interface. Back button, play pause button, toggle button off, not pressed. Let's go to play pause and hit NVDA enter and let's see what came of it. By the way, just in case you notice something that is off right now, just while recording this, I noticed that I was doing something wrong here because I accidentally didn't arm my track correctly. So I had to retake this. But no worries, it's basically the same melody. So here we go. We press NVDA plus enter this and play. Invoke on. Da, 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 da. Oh. So as you can hear, it's pretty accurate. And then again, I'm singing badly, so it takes some notes that are not meant to be there. If I, for example, change this to C major now. Back button, clear, toggle, but remove, com, chromatic, combo, box, chrom, major. Remove, toggle, clear, button, but, back button, button, play, pause, button, toggle, button, off, not pressed. And try once again. Invoke on. Da, 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 da. Off. Oh. It's already a bit more clean. If you turn it back to chromatic, it will put in all the tiny notes that are not part of the scale. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think I might have found out what this drop down is for. Back lid, toggle, button, remove, combo. Change it to adjust, adjust instead of remove and put it into chromatic combo but major. Major once again. And let's see what happens. It tries to automatically adjust the note instead of removing it if it's not part of the scale. So that's actually pretty useful. Let's hit clear. Clear button button. Invoke. Add button. Remove button list one. Now that we are back in this screen. Neural note. Toggle button on pressed. I will show you what the unknown field is for. Button. Button. Unknown. And this is basically where you either drag or drop or load the audio file, but you will need OCR for this. So let's fire up the OCR. Recognizing result document. Load or drop an audio file. That's great. We will do that by pressing enter on this. Select audio file dialog data name. Element at end guitar acoustic dot one but selected one of one. Now we just select the wave file. Selected. FX. And load it in. And now we are thrown out of the window again. Remove button list one. Let's focus it. Neural note on Great. Play pause button toggle button off not pressed. Let's press play pause and see what happened. Invoke on. <laughs> So this is the guitar, the sample that we've loaded, playing together 
with the MIDI. I think from reading the description, there should be a way to turn off the original audio, but I haven't found anything that does it yet. Maybe the button isn't accessible enough, but we can grab the MIDI that it generated and just drag it over into our DAW. And that is actually pretty easy. And what we need to do is to go into the unknown field once again. Play pause button, no pitch, then come unknown. Here we go. Let's use OCR once again. Recognizing result document. Here we go. Strike the MIDI file from here. Yeah, MIDI pile, but it's actually a MIDI file. Let's hit enter once again. And after doing that, it is important to know that sometimes this might not work. I think it depends on the mouse being in a certain spot or at least in a certain area within the Reaper window. So sometimes you might get an error message which just says couldn't load the file because unsupported file format. Sometimes you just get a weird sound and nothing happens. And sometimes it just works. I haven't found a reliable way that always works, but I can get it to work by just playing around with it most of the time. So what I usually do if just pressing enter doesn't help is I go into this OCR window like the MIDI pile from here. and what I do is in desktop layout with NVDA, I press NVDA shift M, which pulls the mouse to where the position of the button is within the Reaper window. And then I do a left click. And most of the time, that at least partially fixes it. And if it doesn't, then I usually go back into this window. I go back into the unknown field. I press OCR again and press enter again. But after routing the mouse to where the button is located, and most of the time that works. You can just escape out of this again. Unknown. Unsaved project. And what it does is it pulls a MIDI clip into Reaper. Sometimes it ends up on the main track that you instantiated Neural Node on. In my case now, it created a second track. And has a MIDI item on it. And the weird thing is that this doesn't always reliably work depending on the size of the project. So if you have a really big project with more than 20 tracks and they are filling up the screen, Reaper doesn't think that you want to insert something, but it thinks that you want to change parameters of a track. So that might actually cause some trouble. So if you're using Neural Node, probably keep a separate project tab open and use that only to transcribe things or translate your voice into MIDI, things like that. And don't use it in a big convoluted project because that might just end up not working. Here is the MIDI item. And let's just instantiate resynth on it and play it back once so that you get an idea of what the MIDI actually sounds like when played by a synthesizer. FX. Add FX to track one ten guitar R E A S Y N T H. Resynth is written R E A S Y N T H. List one. FX. And just unsave. Hit play. <laughs> Here is my conclusion. I was especially impressed by how well Neural Note detects this guitar and chords and things like that. I haven't played around too much with it yet, so I don't know how well it performs on other stringed instruments, non-plugged ones, so bowed ones, for example. I don't know how well it works on a piano. This is your task. You can load it up. It's free. Just get it and see what you can get out of it. It's really useful no matter what. I can usually just drop some MIDI notes, clean it up here and there, and get some usable idea out of it without having to touch a keyboard. Or just to throw a synth on it and see how it looks without having to pull up my keyboard, which is a problem in my situation because it's not always sitting right next to me. I always have to go and grab it from its back and connect it to all the cables and stuff like that. So it's pretty easy to just do it via doubler or via neural node. Especially with voice though, doubler is still more precise, especially if you're using it with the doubler to MIDI capture plugin, which I haven't demonstrated yet, but it will happen eventually because that one automatically cleans up all the recordings that you do. So it has a pretty intense auto clean algorithm that really reworks really well. And as a free product, this is genius. Go grab it. It's awesome. Can only recommend it. I will try to improve the accessibility in the future, talk to the developer and see if they can do something about how the interface presents itself to screen readers right now. It seems to be a juice application. We also don't have many automated parameters, which would be great to have, especially things like the scale or the key to be automatable. 
automatable as in it will show up within the track parameters list so that we can just control them via Osara. It would also be great to be able to change the pitch bend modes there and some other things like turn audio on and off so that we can decide whether we want to hear detected stuff or audio and media together. Things like that. Tiny things and there maybe expose the drag audio and the export MIDI buttons as actual buttons without having to go with mouse and OCR all the time. But apart from that, it's usable. It's not great, but it's doable. And I can only recommend you to try it out yourself. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope it proved useful and I hope it makes your workflow better in the future. I will gladly assist wherever possible and reply to any comments below this video so that you can take your big next step in audio production. If you've got any questions, criticism, whatever it might be, let me know in the comment section below the video. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel and maybe even leave a like. And now, thanks for watching. Bye bye.